Thank you, girls. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with us, please, to the book of Acts, chapter number 18, and verse number 1. Again, good to have all the home folks that are here tonight, all the visiting churches. Good to see Fredwell Tabernacle here tonight. So many from Fredwell. We love and appreciate you all so much. So many good memories. Acts chapter 18, verse number 1. God's word reads like this. And after and the and after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them in Rome, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks, verse 5. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed to the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, they shook his raiment and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads, I am clean. From henceforth I will go into the Gentiles, verse 7. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house was joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee. No man shall sit on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in the city. Verse 11. And he continued there. You mean after all that? Yes. You mean after people opposing? Yes. You mean after people not accept? Yes. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. In fact, outside of Ephesus, you'll never find a place that Paul stays any longer than right here in Corinth. So I want to preach this for just a few moments here tonight. If the Lord had helped me, and I won't keep us long, no promises. <laughs> I simply want to speak to us tonight simply on this thought. Courage to continue. Courage to continue. You're going to help me tonight? Okay, I heard you. I'm going to hold you to it now. Lift your hands up to heaven. Lift your voices up to heaven. And ask the good Lord simply have this way in the remainder of the service. Father, thank you. Oh, let me hear you pray, church. Father, thank you. God, we believe, God, that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ask or more than we could think. And I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would come by and touch us tonight. I pray, God, Lord, take that live coal from off that altar and place it upon my lips. And Jesus, I ask you, God, let me not simply speak about you, but truly speak for you. Let your word go forth tonight. Let your spirit, God, go forth tonight. Meet us around these altars and let us forever be changed in the presence of God. And for this, we carefully give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' holy name. Then everyone said amen. amen. Shake somebody's hand before you're seated. Tell them you're glad to see them at Bible Way tonight. Smile at with talk with him for just a second. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. For a boy that grew up on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, I've had to learn a few things living in north central Kentucky now. One of those things is how to shovel snow. <laughs> There's quite an art to it, actually, believe it or not. You know, I, I heard of a story one time. It had just come down to a, a great snowfall, and after the snow had all fallen, of course, it's all beautiful to look at. I told somebody the other day, snow is absolutely gorgeous to look at on a postcard. That's where you want to see it, right there. You don't want to drive in it. You don't want to be, but you sure want to look at it on a postcard and say, man, that's beautiful. But I heard one time about a man. He went out there, and the elder gentleman decided he was going to shovel off that snow, that, that snow from his drive there. And sure enough, he began to work on it just little by little, just at the very start. He happened to look up. And there were two young boys walking his way. And, of course, they had their snow shovels over their shoulders. And, hey amen, they were looking for business that morning, obviously. And one of those young men looked at that man and said, Sir, 
we'll shovel that snow for you for a very fair price. And they were polite young men. And the elder gentleman just looked back and he said, you know, he said, I appreciate that young men, but uh, be honest with you, I just got started myself on this driveway, so I'll take care of this snow. Yes, sir, no problem at all. And those young men started turning around. But the second young man looked back at the elder gentleman and said, that's no problem at all, sir. After all, most of our business comes from folks that's halfway through anyway. <laughs> Say amen. I believe that young boy is on to something, you know. You know, when, whenever you start that project, no, it ain't snow down here, but you know good enough about how to rake some leaves, don't you? Amen. Whenever you start that project, it just looks so wonderful. You got all these things in your mind about everything's going to be pristine and just perfect. And man, is it exhilarating to start something. And friend, you know what? When you bag that last bag of leaves or you shovel that last bit of snow, it is so rewarding to say, man, it's behind me and it's over. But my friend, it's not in the first and it's not in the end it's somewhere in the middle that we are tempted to always give up can I tell you the great temptation that you will face in this life is not at the beginning of the trial and not when it's over but when it's somewhere in that murky middle where you don't know where it's going to end and you don't know how it's going to end that's when Satan screams in your ear and that's when you've got to have a made of mind I'm just going to continue anyway. I'm just going to walk anyway. I'm just going to pray anyway. Right there in the middle is when you got to have the courage to continue. Friend, I've seen folks and they've started battles. And man, I'm tell you what, they're saying, preacher, I'm in it to win it. And thank God I've seen a few come out on the other side with glorious victory. But what worries me is when they find themselves somewhere in the middle. And I feel like I'm talking to somebody tonight. This thing didn't start just yesterday. And mercy knows you ain't out of the woods quite yet. But I feel like the Lord's trying to reach out to somebody and let you know right now, right here, right in the middle of it, take courage and keep walking on. Take courage and keep living for God. Take courage and hold your head up one more time and say, Lord, I'm just going to trust you. I'm just going to walk with you. That's what your word said to That was the example that we read tonight. That was what your man did. And Lord, if you gave him the power to do it, you're going to give us the strength as well. Paul finds himself in a grimy gritty city by the name of Corinth. In fact, it was so bad that in those times, if, if you wanted to use a derogatory term towards somebody, you would call them a Corinthian. Doesn't seem right. I mean, Paul is, <laughs> Paul is educated. Paul is sophisticated. Paul has couth. Paul has manners. <laughs> In fact, some scholars say that he was fluent in about 22 different languages. I can't confirm that, but what an interesting thought. We do know that he has a formal education. And it seems like the place that he needs to stay is right over there in Athens. That's where all the philosophers are. That's where all the professors and educators are. That seems like a good place for Paul. But how many of you know God's ways are higher than our ways? And sometimes we think, no, Lord, I need to be over here. And I need to be on. the Lord says, no, you don't understand. You need to be right where I have you right now. You need to be doing right what you're doing right now. Amen. Listen, his ways, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And I know sometimes we think, Lord, there's no purpose for me being here. But I want to remind you, the Lord had a purpose for Paul being in Corinth. And he has a purpose for where you are right where you are now. Don't ever make the mistake of saying, now if I was God, I'd do it this way. Yeah. Number one, you're not God. And number two, you'd mess it up. Just trust me. It's kind of, it's kind of, like, kind of like that little boy. Man, he said, nope. It don't make no sense at all. Don't make no sense. He's out there in that hot sun, South Georgia, picking them watermelons. 
He said, now why, if there is a God, would he put a little bitty old acorn on one of them big old oak trees and put them big old watermelons on those skinny little vines? It don't make no sense at all. If God was really God and smart enough, he'd have that backwards the other way, you know. And about that time, he sat up underneath that tree trying to catch his breath, and sure enough, he felt a little bitty acorn poof, hit him right on top of that head. He said, he got the Lord say to him, ain't you glad that wasn't a watermelon? Say, man, come on, I'm telling you, God knows. The Lord knows what he's it may not make sense from the natural eye it may not make sense in your natural mind but he is a God that knows the beginning from the end and it's times just like now where you gotta say Lord when nothing don't make sense and nothing don't seem like it's gonna end all I'm gonna do is keep on marching all I know to do is keep on praying all I know to do is keep on seeking somebody say man if you win saved a day or 30 years you've been saved too long to turn back years ago brother court i was there in sweden at the school of christ we had a few days afterwards and then brother said would you like to go over to norway i said sure i'd love to go with you and sure enough on we flying trip over to the fjords of norway beautiful and we went we went through one of those major cities there and in that major city the way there was a there was a marathon that was taken by. I'd never seen a marathon before, you know. And I said, man, I want to see this. And sure enough, them runners started coming down that road. And I told one of them brothers, I said, Now brothers, I don't know where this race started, but all I can tell you this somewhere soon and very soon is the finish line for these runners and they said why do you say this brothers hey I said all I can tell you is when you first start running a race man you're full of enthusiasm but the only folks that's going to finish the race are the ones full of determination and when you look in the eyes of them runners it wasn't so much enthusiasm as it was determination they were saying man I come too far to turn back now I done run too long I done sacrifice too much. I've got too much behind me and too much ahead of me to turn back now. I feel like telling somebody, amen, you've got to have a determination to say, Lord, I will continue. I'll just do what I know is right. You walked up to him by the time if you was asking any one of them runners, are you hurting? They would said, yes. You feel like quitting? Yes. Are you going to stop? No. 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 Beloved, you have to have a made up mind to say no matter what comes my way, I have to continue in this way. I have to continue. There is no plan B. There is no alternative. There is no, if this doesn't work out, then I'll figure out something. No, ma'am, no, sir. Every other door has been shut. Every other avenue has been blocked. Every other boat has been burned. This is the way we're going to walk. This is the way we're going to live. This is the way we're going to believe. This is what we're going to do for the Lord. Hallelujah to God. All I'm saying is Paul had a made of mind. How did he say that? How did he know that? Because the Lord was with him here in the time of persecution. Here in a time there was a difficult place. Rome was persecuting the Jews. Amen. He's there in Corinth. But it's right here that the Lord gives him a vision and says, be not afraid. Speak. Don't hold your peace. I'm with you. Nobody's going to hurt you. I've got more people in this city than what you know, Paul. I'm still with you and when he hears from heaven he finds the strength to continue each of us have to come to that place we say God I have got to hear from heaven if I'm going to continue and that's what happened to Paul everything in Paul's life brother Corey all hangs on this one nail. Is Jesus going to be with me? If that nail breaks, everything breaks. If that nail slips, 
it all goes under. If Jesus can't hold on to me, if Jesus can't help me, if Jesus can't be beside me, then everything falls apart. And Paul lets us know, thank God, I'm going to hold on to the unchanging hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean the situation got easier. In fact, for Paul, it even got a little bit harder. But the Lord sought him through it. And the Lord's going to see us through things. Amen. Paul found courage to continue because he had a revelation that Jesus Christ is going to be with me. He's going to be beside me. He's going to be before. I wish somebody get a hold of this tonight. I don't know where you are in the journey. I don't know where you are in the trial. But the Lord God is not going to forsake you. He's not going to forget you if you hold on to Him. Now it's one thing to say it when it's somebody else's trial, huh? Isn't it? The, I mean, I mean, you just get all anointed when it's your friend's trial. I mean, man, you you can say keep a chin up and shout hallelujah right behind it, can't we? But what about when it's the man in the mirror? What about when it's us? What about when it's us that the doctor looks at and says, now listen, we've... We found a spot, and we don't know what, what that means, but we need to do some more. What about... What about, what about when those children say, you know what, we're going to do this and we're going to, I know you raised us one way, but we're going to go the other. Friend, there's a thousand things out there that can shoot arrows at your faith. You have to have a shield of faith. Stand up and say, Lord, I'm going to continue to trust you. I'm going to continue to walk with you. Hallelujah. Paul doesn't just say it, but he shows it. He shows you and me how Jesus is with him and how Jesus is with us. And can I submit to us according to God's word? tonight that Jesus Christ is with us in his personage hallelujah he is real and he is here amen he's not some mystical he's not some etherical out in the nowhere he walks with me and it talks with me and it tells me I am his own hallelujah I woke up with him on my mind hallelujah. he's been with me throughout the day he's been better than me and I've been to myself and I'll tell you he's with us if you learn to walk with them. Somebody said, yeah, but Brother Estes, I need somebody real and I need somebody here. Wrong. He is real. He is here. You, you keep thinking he's a God. That's a far off. Paul tells those Philippians, the Lord thy God, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord God is at hand. The Lord is at hand. Amen. I know that's a reference to the coming of the Lord, but it's also a reference to this. No matter where I reach out, He's there. He's here. The Lord's at this hand, and He's right there, and He's right there. And every step that I make, He's going to encompass me. Listen, friend, if you don't know that you know that you know that He is with you in the person, hallelujah, thank God you're going to lose your mind. But the promise was this. Amen. That, that virgin shall conceive and bear a son and his name shall be Emmanuel. God with us. God with us. That's right. Amen. Good preaching. And when you're in the deepest valley and when you got to look up to see bottom he reminds you I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm still with you. The promise was this in Isaiah. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Thank you, Jesus. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Verse number 5 of chapter 43. Fear not, for I am with thee. Friend, I'm telling you, there's been times that's all I could hold on to. But that's all that I needed to get me through. Is to say, Lord, all I know is you're here with me. You have not forsaken me. God, I'm just going to pick up my feet and keep moving forward and keep going on. Not because things are perfect. Not even because I see a change in some person's life but because I know that you are unchanging and you are unyielding and you are forever faithful. Somebody give him glory. We, we talk about Matthew 28. Yes, that's the great commission. 
Jesus spake unto them all and said, All power is given unto me in the heaven and earth. Verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. Friend, that is the great commission. But it's also the great commitment. The commission is this. You go. The commitment is this. I will go with you. You go. You live. You do. You be. And I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you even until the end. What about when things are shipwrecked? That's right. But he's going to be with us. What about when things turn up? That's right. But he's going to be with us. Dear mercy, what if things could turn out of hand and all of a sudden before you know it, we're in the middle of a third world war? I don't know the answer to that. All I know is he's going to be with us. He's going to be beside the same tragedies we're seeing in Eastern Europe. Good mercy, they could show up in East Alabama before the night is over. But I can tell you one thing. He's going to be with us. He's going to be beside us. Somebody give him glory there are two ways that man sees one by sight the other by insight and Paul has an insight that you and I need to see tonight that no matter what prison I'm in he's with me now continue now continue now continue. have you ever noticed that whenever Paul really hits rock bottom, Jesus, or an angel of the Lord, appears unto Paul and basically, about every time, says just about the same thing. Don't worry. I'm with you. Keep going. There it is. Over and over. He appears to him, puts his arm around him, says, I'm with thee. <laughs> Ooh. Thank you, kind. Thank you, kind. You know when you done ruined one microphone, man. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm beside you. Right. Now keep going. I'm with you. Cheer up. Now keep going. I'm with you. Keep your head up. Now keep going. I'm with you. Hold your shoulders back. Now keep going. But, but, but father, the hurt, the pain, I know. But I'm with you. Keep going. Over and over. In Acts 23, a riot breaks out. And the Lord appears to them and says, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Paul's on a ship in Eurachlodine. We're Eurachlodon. An angel of the Lord comes to him and gives him a message and lets him know, Paul, I'm with you. I'm beside you. Amen. At the end of Paul's life, in 2 Timothy, is a prisoner in Rome. He knows he can hear the footsteps. Every Every time that soldier walks down that door, it could be a meal or it could be death. And Paul smiles and says, guess what? He's still with me. He's still with me. <laughs> Some of you have heard me say it. I'll say it again. I was in Brazil a couple of years ago, a few years ago now. And uh, there was a Brazilian pastor there. And the Brazilian pastor was smuggling Bibles into China. And he said, man, he said, I got like five suitcases full of Bibles into that communist country. He said, but I was walking through that six time and that guard, and I mean, every time it's that same, for whatever reason, that guard stopped. Potion to, motion to me. Got that luggage up there. He said he opened up that luggage, pulled back that top. He said it was slapped full of Bibles. And that Chinese guard looked at that Brazilian man and said, ha! What do we have here? You are in big trouble. And he said immediately, the Lord spoke to him and said, Say back to him, I'm not the one in trouble. You're the one in trouble. So he says, I'm not the one in trouble. And the Chinese guard looks back at me and says, Why am I in trouble? And the Brazilian pastor said back, I don't know. He said, quickly, I began to pray. Father, I'm the one about, why, he's, I'm, I'm, why is he the one? And he said, the Lord spoke to him with word of wisdom and said, tell him this. Sir, for the last five times in a row, I have smuggled suitcase after suitcase 
full of Bibles right underneath your nose. Now, I cannot wait for you to take me to your superior so I can tell him that for the last five times in a row, you, sir, have failed. I, I want to let, he said, you're the one who's in trouble, sir. He said, that Chinese guard just put his head down. He zipped that luggage and pointed his finger and said, Go! He said, I ease those Bibles into that communist nation. All I'm telling somebody is he's going to be with us. He's going to be beside us. He's going to go before us. Somebody give him praise. I don't know where you are. I don't know where the finish line is. But the Holy Ghost is telling somebody, you keep going forward. You keep marching on. You keep living this life. Give him praise. He said, at first, no man stood with me. All men forsook me. And then he says in verse 17, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, 2 Timothy 4 and 17, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear that I was delivered out of the mouth of the Lord. Look right here, church. Somebody's got to make up their mind. Either God's going to be with me or we're sunk. Either God's going to stay beside me or this thing's going to break to a thousand gajillion pieces. I just cannot help but to believe what he started. He's able to finish. If you'll make up your mind, I ain't leaving him for nothing or nobody. I ain't walking away from him. He's been too good for me to me to turn my back on him. He's been too sweet to me for me to turn my back. And if I'll just stay with him, I got news for your friend. I don't care what devil in hell. I don't care what beast of Ephesus. I don't care what foul force may come against your life. You step back and say, God, all I know is I'm just going to keep going on for Jesus. <laughs> He's with us in his person. He is with us in His providence. Providence simply means to see before. It comes from a Latin word, actually two Latin words. Pro video. Pro meaning first, video meaning to see. And I want to tell you something, friend. Wherever you are right now, here's my promise to you. God has already been there. And whatever you have to face tomorrow, let me promise you this. God has already been there. In fact, you tell me any calendar of any day of any month you can pick out. And I want to tell you something. The Lord has already seen it. He already knows that doesn't mean you're a robot and you don't have any choice. No, he gives men a free will. But I am telling you this. He's a God that goes before us. And some of you have looked around and said, well, that was coincidence. And when are you going to quit saying that was coincidence and start turning around and give God praise for providence and say, Lord, that was not a coincidence. It was you that put those things together. It was you that brought that, to, brought that into being. It was you that connected those things and worked behind the scenes and did things that I could not see and showed me the way. And I was to and if you went before Paul, thank God you're going to go before me too. In verse number two of Acts 18 in our scripture tonight, Paul found a certain Jew, just a certain one, just out of nowhere, named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Because that Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. Now you read that and you just kind of shrug your shoulders and you go, huh, what a coincidence. Wait a second. Did you just read the same scripture that I read? Now understand, when he went to leave there from Athens and to go all the way to Corinth, it's about a 50 mile journey and I don't know, I don't want to read into scripture, but maybe, just maybe, that's one of those trips where he gets shipwrecked on, I'm not sure. I, but but, but, but he, he goes there and he's wondering, dear mercy, what am I going to do? I don't know anybody here. There, there's, no, there's no connections that I have. There's no doors that are open. I don't know where I'm going to get my next meal from. How am I going to pay my bill? And the Lord's just letting them know, you just trust me. And he gets there. Help me, Brother Corey. Face that way. And he gets there, and Paul says, I don't know anybody. Oh, oh, excuse, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. 
Hi, hi I'm, I'm Paul. I'm, I'm not from here. I, I'm actually a Jew, but I'm born again Jew. I'm Messianic Jew. I know there's some folks say there ain't no such thing, but it is. I'm one of them. He said, and also, all of a sudden, Aquila says, well, you are? I'm Jewish too, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Judea. I'm a born again man too. Yeah. Y'all just came from Italy. I just came from there too. That's awesome. You do what for a living? You're a tin maker? Man, this is a... I'm a tin maker too. Do you finally see, do you finally see that there comes a point where you quit shaking your head and saying, man, what a coincidence. And you turn around and you say, you know what? I think God may be in this thing. I think the Lord may be going before me. I think God may be clearing up. I think God may be setting people in my journey. I think the Lord may be putting strategic people in strategic places at strategic times to get me where he wants me to go. Somebody give him praise. They say, well, uh, we don't have a very big church. It's just me and my wife. But you can come to church with us. You know what? We're two or three gathered in his name. That'll work. That'll work. And before you know it, Paul's got friends. Paul's got a church. Paul's got a job. Paul's connected where other tent makers work. And man, Paul's got a place to why don't you finally turn around and say, Lord, it wasn't coincidence. It was God's divine hand. It was God's divine mercy. Dear Lord, he went before. Can I tell you, I don't know what you may face tomorrow. And I don't know where you may go tomorrow. But you need to turn around and say, Lord, all I know is I started my day out in prayer. And I asked for the mind of the Lord. And Lord, you've given me that. And Lord, wherever I go, you're going to go before me. Because your word said in John chapter 10, verse number 4, when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. Hallelujah. You are already been there. You've already fought the battle. You've already secured the glory. Somebody give him praise. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. He's already there. Lord, you're with me in person. You are with me in providence. Man, we talk about angels unaware. How about just good old fashioned saints unaware? And sometimes, by the providence of God, the Lord puts somebody on your heart and just say, text them, let them know, I'm praying for you. And you think, man, this ain't nothing. And then they call you later and say, brother, you don't know, sister, you don't know what that meant to my life. Father, you are going before me. I don't want trouble. You don't want trouble. Nobody wants trouble. But if you're there, keep your chin up and keep moving forward. Yes. Old brother Don Harper, he's gone on the glory now. He's a precious brother. He was a pastor, elderly man up there around where we live in Kentucky. And he said many years ago, he said he's going down the road. And he's taking a bus. And of course, he had his family with him. He said, start smelling smoke, and man, it wasn't good. So he pulls off the side of the road, comes up to the front, pops that hatch, and he said, it's a fire just going right. He said, it's, it so just paralyzed me. It's so, I couldn't move. He said, I'm just, I'm just staring at it. And out of nowhere, on this back road, he said, a man walks up in black slacks and a white shirt, and he's got a fire extinguisher in his hand. And he simply says, Here! He puts out that fire. And Brother Harper said, I look at him, and I look back at him, and he said, my mind just still kind of wrapping myself around what's going on. And sure enough, he said, that man walks around that way, and I'm still just, said, I'm just there for a moment. I don't really know how long I'm there. But then all of a sudden, he looks up, and he, said, and he said, I turned that corner. I'm looking for that man. I said, I can't see that man. And then he noticed, Brother Tom Lee said, there was a little diner up on top of that hill. And he told me, he said, I walked up to that diner, opened that door. <laughs> He said, manager met me there at that door. And I said, sir, he said, there, there was a man that just walked in this diner. He's got black pants on. He's got a white shirt on. Nice looking man. 
And the manager looked back at him and said, Sir, I'd opened up these doors this morning. I've been here all day long and ain't moved. Ain't been no man in no black pants and white shirt walk in this cafe. You said, but that's just what you think. that You call it whatever you want it was. But all I know is this. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen his seed begging bread. Brother Justin, when you stretch your hand out, God's going to be there. He's going to supply. He's going to go before. I'm telling you, listen, friend. Sometimes we think we need the blessing right now. And what we don't understand is the Lord knows no right, not right. Right now, but right over there, and if you'll just trust me every step of the way, you'll get to where I want you to go. You've heard me say before, but I'll repeat it for listening ears tonight. Hallelujah. Years ago, I'm down there in San Luis Potosi with your uncle, twice removed, third cousin, however he's related to you there. Your old brother Benner and I built, I've got, I've got two churches from Florida down there building a perimeter wall around that, that Bible school, that little that church rather. I mean, and I'm looking at, you got to understand, these guys are number one block layers. They are good. Brother Eddie's been with them many times, the folks from Bowling Green and whatnot. And I'm thinking, oh goodness, Lord, we are just about to run out of blocks. We're just about to run. And sure enough, right when we'd get down to the last few, that truck would come down that road and drop them blocks off. And then they worked some more, and that's so, oh Lord, we're running out, we're running out, we're running out. God, we're running out, we're running out. Sorry, for, oh, you have little faith. Thank you, not you, me, okay? And right when we get down to just a few left, the truck would come again and drop off some more blocks and break. Right on time. Right. Just when we needed it. God finished building that beautiful wall. We built the wall. It was huge. I, <laughs> I was building walls before wall building was cool. Thank you, Jesus. Last service we were there, I was giving God praise. And I felt the Holy Ghost speak to me and said, Son, were you ever without a block in your hand? And I said, No, sir, no. And I felt the Lord say, Thus saith the Lord, when you need it, when you really need it, stretch forth your hand and I will fill it, saith the Lord. Somebody give God praise for the providence of God. For the providence of God. I'm trying to close. Give me just a few more minutes. Here. Friend, his personage, his providence, he goes before. He sees before we do. He's, it, I, I don't have time to pray. It's too much to get into tonight. But you look there in verse number 7. He departed thence and entered a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house was joined hard to the synagogue. Here, if you look back in verse 6 of what they did to the man, and all of a sudden you see here in verse 7 how he walks in. It's just amazing from one place to the next. Every time he turns around, I'm not saying his world is perfect, but whatever he needs is right there on time from a God that knows exactly where he is. Dr. Bill Burkett told me one time several years ago we were in Brazil together. He said, Brother Estes, he said, I hope I ain't bored nobody tonight. Last night, give me a little time to talk here, huh? He said, years ago, we were, we, were in, we were in northern Brazil, and we were up around those Amazons, and my interpreter said, he said, there's a tribe that's up there, and that tribe can speak Portuguese from what we understand. Would you like to go up and try to witness to that tribe? He said, yes, I would love to. He said, we took that boat, goes up river, up river, up river. Finally, we came to that shore, and when we got to that shore, he said, all the little children started running away from us. He said, I knew that was a bad sign. And I looked at my, the, the other man and I said, let's get out of here. And the man said, no, if we try to leave now, they will kill us. I said, Dr. Burke, why would they try to kill you? He said, they would have assumed we did something wrong. They'd have shot first, asked questions later. So all we could do was get out of the boat and walk right to the center of that village. He said, we get out of the boat and start walking toward the center of that village. And he told me, he said, Brother Estes, I remember the step that I made where I knew there's no turning back now. I, I, maybe I could outrun those blow darts there, but I know I can't outrun them here. 
And he said, all we could do was just keep walking. We got to that center of that village, and I looked around. He said, I knew it was the center. He could tell how it was designed, and, and the fire that's here, and the, the tents that are kind of surrounding it in the open area. He said, I know this has to be the center of the village, but nobody is here, or nobody I thought was here, until all of a sudden the trees and, and, and then parts of the tent starts walking toward me, and all of those Indian tribal people, the, the, those indigenous people had painted their body perfectly to blend in with that surrounding. And he said, on every side, they're coming just like this, just like this. And so my interpreter is asking me, Você fala em português? Do you speak Portuguese? Do you speak Portuguese? And they're not responding. And then they got close enough and he noticed. He said every last one of them had a little cross hanging around their neck. And he said, ask him about the cross. What is that? And so the interpreter asked him, what's that cross? And when he did that, that chief, and he said, I knew he had to be the chief. He stopped all of them. And then he told the interpreter, yes. Yes, we speak Portuguese. But you ask about the cross. They said years ago, a man came and told us there's power in the cross. There's power in the cross. But then we heard of him no more. And Dr. Burke told me, he said, Brother Estes, he said, it's the Amazon. He said, it could have been a crocodile. It could have been mosquito. It could have been cannibals. Who knows? But somebody told them there's power in the cross. But then they said to him, but we do not understand this. But our forefathers told us that one day there will be a man that comes and shows us what that power means. And then they looked at Dr. Burkett and they said, Can you tell us what the power of the cross is? And Dr. Burkett said, and, brother, and he's sitting there eating flan. And he says, And Brother Estes, I, I was able to lead that entire tribe to saving faith in Jesus. I'm just telling somebody, before you get there, he's already been there. I'm closing. Lord, I'm going to keep going on because you promise you're with me in the personage. You promise you're with me in the providence. You're promising that you are with me in your promises. Verse number nine concludes our text tonight. The Lord spake to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid. Speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And I feel like that's what the Lord is trying to tell somebody in this house tonight. Be not afraid. Speak. Don't hold your peace. I am with you. Ain't nobody going to hurt you. I still have much people in this city. I know we've turned around. We've said, good night, everybody in Baldwin County knows about Bible Way. No, they don't. Not yet. No, they don't. We've reached out to every last soul. We can. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. Not yet. We've tried to pull on everybody. With, no, we haven't. Not yet. Open your mouth. Don't hold your peace. I'm with you. Ain't nobody going to hurt you. I've still got a lot of people in this place I want to see saved. Yeah. Now, if I was Paul, if you was Paul, now I know you've got ten times the faith that I do, but if I was Paul, I'd probably looked around and said, Jesus, I don't think you understand. This is Corinth. This is a grimy city. Nobody wants God in this place. Nobody wants truth. And no, there's no way that a church can be planted in a place like Corinth. But I want to remind you, beloved, not only does that man plant a church, he plants a Pentecostal church. And a lot of our theology, amen, within Pentecostal churches, we can gather right out of the leathers of the church in Corinth. Beloved, he can and he will if he can just find some Somebody and I say, Lord, I may have been knocked down, I may have been kicked down, but I'm getting up and I'm going on and I'm just going to do what I know I'm supposed to do. You know what, church? You know, I feel like Lord Jones. Keep your chin up, hold your shoulders back. And even when you're wounded, look at the bruised and speak life to them. And even when you're bruised, look at the wounded and speak life to them. And say there's a God that can and there's a God that will. 
Well, that's all I know to do. So, so people said, Brother Estes, I'm going to tell you what, man. Woo! Are you seeing them get healed by the thousands? No. Man, bless God, Brother Estes, are you seeing them get saved by the multi? No, I'm sorry. Did I let you down? No. But here's all I know to do, Brother Joe. Get up, seek God, pray through, burden my heart, deliver my heart. Get up, pray through, seek God, burden the heart, deliver the heart. And keep going on for what I know is right in God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It'd be nice if Jesus was to appear to you in the middle of the night and put his hand on your shoulder and say, open your mouth and be not afraid. I am with thee. I have much people in the city. But he may not do that in the middle of the night. But he is trying to do that in the middle of a service. And if somebody would just get a hold of God and say, Lord, despise it in spite of what I feel... Despite of what I see, all I know to do is just pray back through and just walk on with Jesus. Amen. Amen. You start in time, you like sisters. Here's one for you. Private school, public school, which one? Private school. Any public school? Okay, here it is. Private versus public. What year did Christopher Columbus sail the ocean blue? Don't let us down, Rebecca, not now. Your mama done paid too much money for them DVDs. write a lot. Mr. Columbus doesn't write a lot inside of his journal. But over and over again the one entry that Mr. Christopher Columbus does have is simply this. Today we sailed on. And there's going to be a lot of entries in your journal. It ain't got nothing about no healings. and ain't got nothing about no miracles. But it's just going to read this, Brother Tom. Today, I pressed on. Today, I got up and I pressed right on. Today, I didn't see any miracles. I didn't see any blinded eyes open. I didn't get none of that. I didn't get none of that. But today, I'm still walking with you. I feel like the Lord's talking to somebody in this house. And when you look back at your life, you're going to say, thank God. Even when I don't understand, just like Paul, he continued the Father, I'm just going to continue on this journey. Stand with me all over this house. Lift up holy hands into heaven. Somebody begin to call on his name this night. Don't be afraid. Open your mouth. I'm with you. Ain't nobody going to hurt you. I ain't finished with you. <laughs> your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. This trial didn't start yesterday for you. And to be real honest, you don't even know where the finish line is, do you? You're somewhere in the murky middle. You're somewhere in that mysterious middle. And God reaches out to you tonight. And He says, hold not your peace. I'm with you. Nobody's going to hurt you. I'm with you. Get back up. March right on. Press right on. Pray right on. I have not left you, child. I am not finished with you, saith the Lord. 
If that's you tonight and you say, Brother Estes, I'm somewhere in the middle of it. I don't even know where it began. I'm not sure where it's going to end. But that's you. But I need help from God to slip up your hand to heaven tonight and say, that's me. Thank you and thank you and thank you and you and you and you. Others in the thank you as well. Others in this house. It didn't start yesterday and I don't know when it's going to end. But God, see me through till that day comes. Lord God, just see me through to that. Somebody else. That's right. Hands are still going up. Somebody else in this place. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. God bless you, ma'am. Thank you. The Lord knows. I don't know when it's going to end. I'd love to say it's going to end on such and such. I do not have that information. But I do know he's come by to tell somebody You keep pressing on You keep continuing on You know that by the providence of God He didn't bring you this far to let you go now You raised your hand You say I need help from the Lord Just to let me continue until that finish line does come. Step out right now. Come on, step out. Amen. You raise your hand. You want the Lord to touch you. You want God to help you. That's it. Come on. They're already starting to come. Come on, pray. That's it. Come on. Seek God. And let's seek the Lord around these altars right here. Lift up holy hands and say, God, give me courage to continue. Give me courage to keep walking on. Give me courage to keep pressing on. Lord, I love you to end the tomorrow. I love for you to see, to show me the finish line tonight. But until you do, I'm just going to trust in the providence of the Lord that says, You've done put too many things together. You've done connected too many circuits. You've done connected too many promises for me not to believe. And you're going to see us through. Give a praise, church. Call on his name.